Hey, I'm Dan Martin, and this is the Road Code Race Analysis of the Tour of Britain Stage 7. Today, the riders rediscovered that they actually have a little chainring fitted to their bike. After a week of flat racing, the race hits the Cotswolds. These aren't huge alpine passes, but as the race passes from Tewkesbury to Gloucester, the undulating terrain is sure to mix things up a bit. As the race got underway, there was a flurry of attacks before a lull in the storm led to a very familiar looking breakaway. It then became apparent that the big guns were really saving themselves for the hilly part of the course. With an uncategorised climb, quickly followed by a second category climb to Winchcombe Hill, we saw an increasingly aggressive peloton looking to really put pressure on the Jumbo Visma leaders team. And it was Ben Turner of Ineos Grenadiers who really laid down the power. The Road Code Live Race Centre picking up that he did a six minutes effort averaging 540 watts, which shows how different this breakaway was to the other days, as Ben really had to force his way Away. he wasn't just allowed to go in the break. He was joined by Mark Donovan and then three other riders made it across, which ordinarily wouldn't be a problem for the peloton to chase back. But this time with only six man teams and Jumbo Visma having ridden the front pretty much alone every single day, they were really starting to show signs of fatigue. The other teams happy to leave the emphasis on Jumbo Visma in the hope of isolating the leader of the race by having them burn through all their riders in the chase for the breakaway. In fact, at one point, it really looked like they weren't going to close the gap until Movistar actually aided the chase with Carlos Verona, bringing the break back to within reachable distance, but it still wasn't closed so we saw a desperate effort from Van Aert. His team having collapsed around him, he was left isolated and so decided to try to make the bridge himself. This really was his only option if he was going to retain control of the race. If not, he was going to be relying on other teams to do the chasing. But he didn't manage to make the junction and on a slight downhill was caught by a much depleted peloton. The gap now around 30 seconds. Van Aert's sole remaining teammate, Raven van Hoydonk, was left to do the chase alone, keeping the group within touching distance and even bringing it back to only 20 seconds so that Van Aert could launch on the last remaining uncategorized Climb. It was strange to see Magnus Sheffield riding on the front of the group behind while he had a teammate with Van Aert in Ben Turner. I can only imagine that they really prefer to keep their options open for tomorrow's much harder stage, especially with riders like Magnus Sheffield and Carlos Rodriguez. In the Oscar Ideas really have to make the numbers count tomorrow. But it was really smart riding by Stevie Williams, who allowed Ineos to hold the gap close enough, and then he saw that the group in front wasn't taking any more time as Van Aert had already exhausted himself with his attack. And then, with a short, sharp acceleration, managed to make the jump quickly across the leading riders. Then with four kilometers to go, Van Aert made the decision to attack. In these scenarios, sometimes attacking is the best form of defense. And maybe he was just thinking of the stage victory, but I actually think he was looking around at the composition of the group and saw that there was four teams with multiple riders in the group and he didn't want to give them the opportunity to start taking it in turns to attack him, especially with the GC being so close. It's a sign of the aura that surrounds Van Aert right now that as soon as he attacked, I think everybody just expected him to ride off into the distance and win the stage. But this race is always deceptively hard. And we saw a fatigued Van Aert who had done a lot of the work in the final 30 kilometers to close the gaps, get caught in the final kilometer, just managing to stay in the wheels. Although today, being a sprint stage, there was a three second rule, which means that in order to be rewarded the same time as the group, he only had to stay within three seconds of the back wheel of the last rider in the group, which at these speeds is around about 30 meters. So onto the sprint. And of course, this was a very different sprint to what we've seen so far this week. With a smaller group of riders comes a much slower launch speed. Rasmus Tiller hitting an incredible 1620 watts maximum power, beating into second place the stage six winner, Danny Van Poppel, who actually managed to beat his stage winning maximum power by 80 watts but it still wasn't enough but how can we explain this difference in power when the riders are launched at a higher speed they're already riding at a very high power and just looking to maintain the speed or accelerate a little bit the day sprint launched at a slower pace meant the guys could put much more torque through the bike and hit those lofty max powers you can actually try this at home start a sprint at 80 rpm and then do another one at around about 100 rpm and it's much easier to create a higher max power off the slower cadence but this sprint wasn't just one on pure power. Tiller enjoyed a great lead out from his teammate. But with Danny Van Poppel sucked to his wheel, I had the Dutchman down to win another stage. But here, you can see Danny Van Poppel moves into the wind before the lead out is even finished. Ideally, when you're coming from behind, you let the guy in front take as much wind as possible before beating him on the line, using the slipstream to gain more speed to enable you to overtake. Whereas in this situation, it was just a straight sprint against Rasmus Tiller. Or even worse, Van Poppel was actually in the wind for longer than Tiller. It looks to me as though Van Poppel started his sprint moved into the wind but then realized it was too far to go backed off the pedal slightly and then tiller got the jump on him that moment of hesitation potentially cost him the stay victory although i have to say rosemary tiller was super impressive with his sprint so there we have it, that one stage making an incredible difference to the GC. We still have Van Aert leading by 3 seconds, but now it's over 10 riders instead of 50, which makes it much easier for the Jumbo Visma team to control things tomorrow. Although the course, by far and away the hardest stage of the week. And personally, I think all hell's going to break loose as we hit the Welsh mountains. Remember you can track live the suffering of the riders on the Road Code Live Race Centre, power data and geo positioning. And then I'll be back to mull over the happenings of what's sure to be an aggressive day of racing. And we'll get to see who is crowned the winner of the 2023 Tour of Britain.